Welcome to my lecture online. The next thing we want to review in thermodynamics is cyclic processes. Now they're not as difficult as they look, but they involve a lot of work. So we need to try to organize our thoughts and our work. So here we have a very straightforward cyclic process. The process goes from A to B to C to D and back to A. So that's why they call it cyclic. You end up in the same place you started. In any cyclic process, regardless what type of processes we have, so here you can see we have two isovolumetric processes and two isobaric processes, but there could be any combination of the four thermodynamic processes. But in any case, regardless which thermodynamic processes we have in the cycle, this is always true. When we're looking for work done in the cycle, the amount of heat added to the gas and the change in internal energy, it's fairly straightforward. The work done is always going to be the area inside the cycle. Now, presumably, we're going in a clockwise direction, which means we're doing positive work. The gas is doing work. If the cycle is in the opposite direction, counterclockwise direction, then we're doing work on the gas, which means negative work. But typically, the process is doing the work, the gas is doing the work, so it's in a, in a, a clockwise uh, cycle. The work then is always going to be equal to area inside that cycle. So essentially it's going to be the change in the pressure multiplied times the change in the volume. And that's what we have here and that's always going to be the case. Now if we have like isothermic and isobaric processes it may be a little bit more difficult to find the area. That's another question. Uh, but if it's simple like this it's straightforward. We can simply say it's the area inside the cycle. The change in internal energy of a complete cycle is always zero. Since we end up in the same place we started, and so the conditions here at A is the same as they were when we started in the previous cycle, there's no change in internal energy. Which means that all the work done by the cycle is provided for by the heat added to the cycle. So the amount of heat added to the cycle always equals the work done by the cycle since the change in internal energy it changes throughout the, the cycle, but when we get back to the same place we started today, the change in internal energy is zero. And that's always the case. That makes it easy. What if we want to find the work done, the change in internal energy, and the heat added to the gas in each, or taken away from the gas, in each part of the cycle, how do we do that? Well, to do that, we must know the temperature at each of the four locations A, B, C, and D, and of course we use the ideal gas equation to find the temperature at A, the temperature at B, the temperature at C, and the temperature at D. So that allows us to calculate all the temperatures provided we know the pressure at each point and the volume at each point. Once we have that, we can also look at the work done in each of the four processes, and notice there's no work done in the isovolumetric process from A to B and C to D, and there's work done in the process that's isobaric from B to C and from, from D back to A and notice that the change in the volume will be positive going from B to C and negative going from D to A so that's positive work done and negative work done here. To find the Q in each of the four parts of the cycle and the change in internal energy we're going to need the following equation starting with Q going from A to B it's going to be the same as delta U. When, when we have what we call an isovolumetric process, that means that the heat added to the gas equals the change in the internal energy of the gas. Well, at least it gives us the same equation. Now let's see, uh, because there's no work done, right? If there's no work done, these two must be equal, and they're going to be NC sub V times the change in the temperature. So both for, from A to B and from C to D, notice Q and delta U will be the same, and that will be the equation you use. Because the volume stays constant. But if the pressure stays constant, like going from B to C and A to D, uh, D to A, then notice that the Q from B to C is NC sub P delta T, and the Q from D to A is NC sub P delta T. This will be a negative Q, of course, since the change in temperature will be negative. And of course, all the changes in the temperature will be provided by knowing these four values right here. For the delta U going from B to C and D back to A, notice instead of C sub P we have to use C sub V for the same change in delta T. So this is how we're going to calculate the delta U, the Q, 
and the work done in each of the four cycles, but when you add them all up, they should add up to the same values that you got from doing this. Okay, so that's 120.3K. Temperature at B, 481.1. Temperature at C, 934, if I can read my writing. And temperature D, 228.5. Work done in the whole cycle is 270 joules. And heat added is the same as that. Work done from B to C. 360 joules. And work done, that would be minus 90 joules. Okay, Q from A to B. 750 joules. Q from B to C, 1260 joules. From, oh, whoa, 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 that's 360, 360 joules. I think I got this wrong. Q, nope, 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 that's good. Then minus 1425, like that, and finally uh, minus 315. And delta U, 900 joules, and delta U here would be Two twenty five. That's negative, 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 positive, positive. Okay. All right. So here we have all the values, all the results. Go ahead and try to calculate those yourself and see if they match what we got here on the board. And that is how it's done.